Hey everyone, welcome to the class on image processing with OpenCV and Python. This course is meant to be hands-on approach to the computer vision. The goal of image processing is to understand the story and folding in a picture. This is quite simple for us, but for computer the task is extremely difficult. So why to learn this computer vision? Well, images are everywhere. Whether it can be the personal photograph or album in your smartphone, public photos on Facebook or videos on YouTube, we now have more images than ever. And we need a method to analyze, categorize and quantify the content of these images. There are countless applications of computer vision. For example, you have recently tagged a photo of yourself or a friend on the Facebook lately. How does Facebook seems to know where the faces are in the images? Facebook has implemented a face recognition algorithm in their website, meaning they can access the faces. Not only that, they can only find the faces in the image, they can also identify whose face it is as well. Face recognition is application of computer vision in the real world. There are also many type of computer visual applications out there. Well, you could build representation of the 3D world using the public images repositories like Flickr. We can download the thousands of images and pictures and using that you can construct a 3D representation of the city. We would virtually navigate the cities through our computer. Sounds cool, right? Another popular application of computer vision is surveillance. While there are different types of surveillance out there, one type of surveillance is related to analyzing the security videos looking for possible suspect for robbery. But different types of surveillance can be seen in the retail world, departmental store can be calibrate the cameras to track how you walk through the stores and which kiosk do they stop at. Of course, computer vision can also apply to the area of medical field too. Analyzing x-rays, MRI, cellular structure can also perform using the computer vision algorithms. Computer vision is now many areas in your life whether you realize it or not. We could also apply the computer vision algorithms to visual effects in the movies. For example, you can see this picture before and after the visual effects. Computer vision also used in the sports like cricket, football, etc. For example, in this picture you can see to track the ball in the cricket, they use the computer vision application to do this. Also, you can find the many applications in the military areas, license-based detection, and also in retail field too, to identify the gender, age, and also how they are. To identify the gender, age, and also the emotion of the face using the face recognition applications. Certainly, computer vision is an exciting field with endless possibilities. To explore the world of computer vision, we need to understand the image processing concepts that was used internally in the computer vision algorithms. In this course, we will use the OpenCV library to do the image processing. Every topic and every algorithm will start from zero, where I will teach you the essential background and mathematical concept in the algorithms wherever required. This will actually help you to understand the algorithm and moreover, you will know when to use an algorithm for which particular application. Currently, we are going to discuss these topics like on image basics, drawings, image processing, smoothings, gradient, videos, and GUI. As I said, this course is a project based learning. After completion of each and every topic, we will do small projects on that particular topic, which help you to understand more practical use of the algorithm. Here is the list of the project that we are going to do in this course. In future, I will add more topics on the computer vision algorithms. 
Also, I will add more projects related to machine learning, deep learning for the computer vision. Let us get into the class and start our journey in computer vision and image processing together. I will see you inside the class. Welcome back. In this lesson, we are going to see how to install Python. The first step when installing the Python is open your browser and go to the search engine google.com and here just type python click on the first link which is available that is www.python.org which is the official website of python click on that now you have entered into the python official website in order to download the python what you have to do is that click on this downloads and click on the latest available python for windows in my case, it is 3.9.6. Click on this button to download the Python. Alright, you can see that I have downloaded my Python software. Okay, I have downloaded my Python software in the desktop. Now what you have to do in order to install that, right click and click on run as administrator. Click S. Make sure you check the path at Python 3.9 to path. Click on that. 3.9 is what the version I'm installing now. Now click on install to install this Python setup. Wait for a couple of minutes until you complete your process. Alright, now setup was successful and you have successfully installed Python. Close it. In order to make sure your Python is installed or not, what we have to do, we will test that in the command prompt. For that, go to search and type cmd and click on the per command prompt here. Now type python. As soon as you execute this command, you can see that python 3.9.6 and you can see this message which means that you have successfully installed the python and you opened python shell successfully so this is how you need to install python now type exit to close the python shell we will continue in the next lesson welcome back in this lesson we will see how to install the packages that was required for this course that is for opencv and python so what i'm going to do here is that in my current working directory let me right click and create a new text document and name this text document as requirements.txt and open this text document and here what I will do I will type all the requirement packages that was required in this course. The first package that was required for the OpenCV or the dependency library is NumPy. NumPy is a numerical Python library and the next important library that was required for OpenCV is SciPy. SciPy is a scientific Python. So these two are most important libraries that was dependency for OpenCV. And one more library I'm going to install here is Matplotlib. Matplotlib is basically the visualization library. And the next library that was required for OpenCV is Pillow. Pillow is also known as Python image library and which is actually one of the dependency for OpenCV. Now finally we will uh, also type OpenCV-Python. So this is the package which actually install OpenCV. This and all the Python packages that was required in this course. Now the next step is that we also install one more package is Project Jupyter. Jupyter is uh, an IDE which we are going to use in this entire lecture series. So we'll also install this Jupyter and we are going to work on Jupyter throughout this series. Alright, so let me save it. Now open the command prompt and install all the packages that was there in the requirements.txt. In order to do that, since this is my current working directory, now what I will do, I will select this and type cmd. And as soon as you execute that, you can see that uh, the current working directory 
and the path is being automatically get set now install this requirements.txt using python pep so pep install a pip is basically the python install package which will come default by installation with python so now type pip install hyphen r requirements.txt now execute it now what it is going to do whatever the packages that i listed in the requirements.txt pip will going to be installed that and moreover you need to remember that pip will install the latest available python packages that's really cool right Let's wait for a couple of minutes until you complete the whole installation process. Alright, now I have installed all the packages that was listed in the requirements.txt. Let's test this. So, in order to test that, what we will do is that let's open the Python shell. Okay, now I am in the Python shell. Now, let me check whether the packages are installed or not. In order to check that, let's import. The first package I install is numpy as np. If at all you are not getting any error message like no module name numpy, it means that you have successfully installed numpy. Obviously my important package in my case is opencv which is import cv2. And if you execute that and here you go you can see that we don't have any error message which means that I have successfully installed opencv python. Cool, right? Let me exit this you by typing the command exit. Now let me also open the Jupyter Notebook since I installed the ID Jupyter Notebook. In order to open the Jupyter Notebook, what we have to do is that in the current working directory or what are the directory you want, make sure you set the path and type Jupyter Notebook and press enter. And as soon as you press the enter and you can see that your project Jupyter is running in your default web browser. In my case it is opening in the Google Chrome. And you can notice that what are the files that is being displayed which is the files that was available in the current working directory. Cool right? I will see you in the next lecture. Until then, happy learning. Welcome. This course is meant to be hands on on how to guide to getting started with OpenCV and Python. Let me tell you a small story. When I'm learning this data science, I was always wondered that what is an image and what is inside the image? Is it in a binary form or any kind of fair values? And what it actually represents? And also why this image is called RGB? how the pixel is created and how they are arranged also wondering like you know how computer sees an image and how can computer understand just like a human there are a lot of questions that was coming to my mind when i'm learning this data science i'm trying to understand this with all the questions i started learning the open cv in python you know what from that day onwards, my way of looking into the images has changed completely. When I see an image, I am seeing a big matrix with X rows and Y columns. If I do some arithmetic operations with that big matrix, with another matrix, I am getting a different matrix which is called image effect. Then I realized that image processing is all about performing some arithmetic operations to an image. With that said, let us right away see how to load an image from the disk, display it on the screen and save it in a different format. First thing what we are going to do is that like you know, let us look into our image. You can download the images from the resources and where you can see some lots of images that we keep on adding here. And in the images folder currently you can see the bird and flamingo.jpg bird is there with me. So what I'll do is that let me consider that this image which is a beautiful bird flamingo and let's see how to read this image, load this image and save it in some different format. Alright, so now what we will do, so let us open the Jupyter Notebook and you can navigate to the folder and type the command prompt and uh, set the path. This is my current working directory. 
set the path of the current working directory. N now open Jupyter Notebook. Jupyter space Notebook. Okay, so now Project Jupyter is running successfully. So you can see that the images folder is there and inside that we have bird and flamingo is there. Perfect, right? So now what we will do, let's go to new Python 3 and open the new Jupyter Notebook. And this new Jupyter Notebook is open with a name called Untitled. Let me change this name to one underscore display load and save something like this so now what we will do is that the first thing we are going to import some necessary libraries or packages that was required for this example the first uh, library that I'm going to import here is numpy also known as numerical Python so import numpy as NP also import computer vision CV2 which is our open CV so it by you can use a simple command import with cv2 that will going to be import the computer vision library cv2 let's execute by the command shift plus enter now the first command is executed successfully so what we will do now is that let's load the image you can load the image by the following command img equal to you can use this computer vision cv2 dot and has a module called mread we can use this module in read and what it is asking is that like you know the first argument we need to pass is the doc string and we will look into the flags later on the first try to understand what is this file name file name basically I just want to provide the name of the file that I'm going to load in this example so what I'll do my in this example I'm going to load uh, my file is there in the images folder and the name of the file I'm going to read is flamingo.jpg so select the file now execute it done now your OpenCV has read your image successfully now let us print the IMG okay so we can see that we have some values that is being displayed some values and this value is basically called pixels it's a tuple of values and usually this is called the pixels and has some values uh, out there and some big matrix is being displayed here you can see this is not a two dimension matrix basically most of the images are three dimension matrix okay so let's look into the shape of that so that you can understand this img dot shap is shape and if you execute this and what you can see here is that we have like you know the shape of the matrix is being displayed here we have 640 rows 640 columns and the three channels three is basically indicates the three channels also known as RGB but usually in OpenCV this three is basically represents BGR OpenCV reads by default reads an image in BGR format okay and uh, next what we got is we got some values what is this values indicates 188 163 119 we will look into this upcoming lecture like what this actually this values represents but now what we will do is that we understand how to load the image and how to print the values inside it now let's display it you can have in OpenCV there is a module called mshow you can use this OpenCV module mshow to display the image so let's use it cv2.mshow and now here we need to provide the two arguments here the first one is win name and second one is mat mat is basically the matrix so this is the big matrix whatever matrix we have I need to provide this big matrix win name is basically the name of the window usually it will uh, open some window and uh, we just need to provide the what is the name of the window that need to be displayed so what I'll do is that like you know I will uh, first I'll provide the window as an example and the name of the matrix that I want to display is IMG 
and immediately after that i need to provide the two more uh, methods one is uh, wait key and second one is destroy all windows let's see what is this wait key and cv2 dot wait key and what this wait key indicates this wait key will say is like you know how much time should i wait for the window to get displayed so how much time should i wait so that's what basically it says and the time is been measured in milliseconds for example if you want to uh, delay uh, or if, if you if you want to display the image for 10 seconds then what you do is that you need to provide 10,000 this 10,000 is basically indicates like you know 10,000 milliseconds so what it does is that like you know it opens the window name example and display the image and wait for 10,000 seconds and after that once it wait for 10,000 seconds what I want to do is that I just want to provide the uh, I just want to close it after 10,000 trace after after 10,000 milliseconds. I just want to close it So for that I can provide uh, a method called cv2 dot destroy all windows Let me execute this and you can see that uh, One window gets pop up something like this and beautiful bird flamingo and here you can see this example This is the name of the window basically it will get disappear after 10 seconds okay so now i just i don't want to disappear after 10 seconds i just want to uh, display the window as long as if i press some button it should disappear that's what need to be happen if that the case what we can do is that we can do some changes in the wait key in wait key instead of providing the 10000 or any kind of delay if we provide a value called zero and basically it will wait for infinite times or, or else in simple language until unless if you press any button it will keep on get displayed so let me provide zero here so now let me execute this what this says that until unless you press any button till then this window will appear so suppose if i press any button in exam my case let me press escape and moment I press the escape, what happens is that, you know, that get disappeared. So that's how, that's how we can display the image using OpenCV. Let's also see how to save an image. In order to save that um, image in any format, we just want the array or we just want the big matrix so for that what we will do is that like you know we will take that module called i am right and uh, we have this i am right and what this indicates like you know file name indicates what is the name of the file you just want to save for example let me save this um, uh, image with the name example.png so previously i just opened the image with the name jpg and uh, I can save it any format, any format I want, I can simply save it. So let's say I, I just want to save an array with PNG. And next argument I need to provide is that like, you know, what is the name of the array that I just want to save? IMG, it indicates like, you know, the name of the array you just want to save. For example, here, the name of the array I just want to save is IMG. So let me provide the same array, IMG. Let me do one thing instead of uh, putting in the examples let me put in my images folder example now execute this now you can see that it uh, we it will return some true indicates that it has saved successfully if some if some other case like you know if you get false and it indicates that like you know you miss something maybe the path does not exist or something else okay so now let me go to my uh, windows or the folder which i'm currently working on this is the images folder here you go we can see this is the jpg is what the name of the image and look into the properties here and this size is 32.5 kb and the type of the file is jpg whereas this is the file i basically i uh, saved using opencv and let me open the properties of this and you can see here the properties that this is the type of the file is .png and the name of the file is example.jpg 
sorry example dot png so this is how like you know you can load an image you can display an image and you can store the image and what are the what are the format you want you can really do that i will see you in the next lecture on concepts of pixels color and grayscale welcome in this lesson we are going to review the building blocks of an image that is pixel we will discuss exactly what is pixel is how pixel are used to form an image and then we will see how to access and manipulate pixels in OpenCV. So what is pixel? Every image consists of set of pixels. Pixels are the raw building blocks of an image. There is no finer granularity than this. Normally we think of a pixel as a color or intensity of light that appears in the given place in our image. If you think an image is a grid, each square box is a grid consists of single pixel. For example, let us pretend that we have an image with a resolution of 500 by 300. That means our image is represented as a grid of pixel with 500 rows and 300 columns. Overall, there are 500 into 3 which is equal to 150,000 pixels in our image. Most of the pixels are represented in two ways. One, grayscale and color. In grayscale image, each pixel has a value between 0 to 255, where 0 corresponds to black and 255 corresponds to white. The value in between 0 and 255 are varying shades of the gray, where the value closer to 0 are darker and value closest to 255 are lighter. Color pixels are normally represented in RGB color. One value for red component, one value for green and one value for blue. Other color spaces exist but let us start with basics and move our way up from there. Each of the three colors is represented by an integer in a range 0 to 255 which indicates how much of intensity of color is there. Given that image value only needs to be in the range 0 to 255 we normally use an 8-bit unsigned integer to represent each color intensity. We then combine this value into RGB tuple and from red, green and blue. Something like this. This tuple represents our color. To construct a white color, we'll fill up each of the red, green and blue buckets completely something like this. To create a red color, we'll fill up the red bucket completely, which is something like this. For your reference, here are some common color representation as RGB tuples for black 0, 0, 0, for white 255, 255, 255, and for red 255, 0, 0, and so on. Now that we have a good understanding of a pixel. Let us have a quick review of the coordinating system. As I mentioned above, an image is represented as a grid of pixels. Imagine our grid is a piece of a graph paper. Using this paper, the point 0, 0, correspond to the upper left corner of the image. As we move down and to the right, both x and y values increases. Let us take a look into the image in the figure to make this point clear. Here I am having letter I on the piece of graph paper. We see that we have an 8x8 grid with a total 64 pixels. The point 0, 0 correspond to the top left pixel in our image whereas 7, 7 represents to the bottom right corner. Finally, the point 3,4 is a pixel, 3 columns to the right and 4 rows down. Once again, keep in mind that we are counting from 0 rather than 1. 
The Python language is zero indexed, meaning that we always start counting from zero. Remember this and you will avoid a lot of confusion later on. I will see you in the next lecture on converting the image in Python. Welcome. In this lesson, we will see how to convert the image color using OpenCV, that is, converting it to gray color and uh, changing the different color formats like uh, BGR, RGB, etc. So let's uh, load the image. So img equal to cv2 dot mread, and we will use the same image which we have used in the previous lesson, that is uh, in the images folder. And the name of the image is flamingo.jpg. All right, so let's execute this. And uh, now print img. As I said, what are the values that is being displayed here? Is pixels. So each and every value represents the pixel. Since this is the color image, that is particularly it will read the image in BGR format. So this whole represents one pixel so this is the first one is b and second column is uh, g and third column is r so this basically represents the intensity of the particular color and if you mix all together we will get one pixel and also one more important thing that you need to understand is that all the images that we are going to be studying is all our unsigned 8-bit integer so all our unsigned 8-bit integer so that's the reason the range of pixel values is between 0 to 255 for an n-bit image the range of pixel value is 0 to 2 to the power of n minus 1 that's the reason for an 8-bit image the range of pixel values is between 0 to 255 as I said earlier, 0 represents darker and 255 represent lighter in color. Okay, so now what we will do is that like, you know, let's try to understand what this image is. So what this matrix is basically represents. So for that, let's look into the shape of the matrix. And we have like, you know, three channels are there, red channel, green channel and blue channel. So each and every channel is basically represents the color. So what we can do here is that in order to understand better, we will split the matrix into three parts. Remember that OpenCV reads an image in BGR format. So which is equal to IMG dot we have a in, in CV2, which is equal to in CV2, we have a module called split and use that module split and uh, split the image. What we want to try to do is that like, you know, it will try to split the image here. IMG. We have successfully split the matrix into BGR. B stands for blue matrix. So this matrix is basically represents the blue color lighter that is darker blue and uh, or more most nearly equal to the black and uh, 255 is the pure blue color and in between we have like you know the mix of blue color is there okay so we can also display that so in order to display we can use a cv 2m show and provide the window name to blue and the matrix is b and after that let's cue the weight key here of zero and immediately after wait key I just want to destroy all windows and let me display even my original image plt.m show this is what my color image and that's my img executed so this is what my color image and this is what my blue image what do you understand from this is that like you know as I said like you know darker darker is non blue and the lighter is the blue like you, know, you can see here there is a, some kind of gray mix is there so this indicates some kind of blue color that's why we have some grayish color here and of course there is some uh, white color is the mix white a mix of white color is there of course white will get anyway white here okay so this is about this so let's look into our red color probably like you know my image is more or less red 
and uh, probably I can get like you know this for this I might get highlighted here let's see my red color so so for that plt dot m show let's display the red comma r also display the green color so comma g okay now I displayed all the images so this is I guess the red color you can see this is the red and as I as I said like you know obviously um, this uh, this indicate this image indicates like you know that lighter lighter is more closest to the red because this is the red matrix and the darker is not closest to the red and here you can see that like you know this is more closest to the red that's why we got like you know something like this this is really cool right and similarly let's look into our green color obviously there is no green mix it's not there but uh, what we can say here is that it will only show you where exactly your white is white color where exactly in in the um color it will only displace the very exactly white and rest all it's not that much lighter so this is how like you know we can understand the um, image we can split the image into three different parts and you can analyze each and every part individually red consists of information about the red color green consists of information about the green color and blue consists of information about the blue, blue color you can also try with the different images so that it, you can understand much more effectively. What I'll do is that like you know let me convert the color here since this is what my BGR image what I can do is that I can convert that into RGB image let's look into that color converter so in order to convert that color what we can do is that like you know we have a module in cv2 which is cvt color let's use that cv2 dot cvt color and use this module cv2 color and there are two arguments you need to keep in mind is that one is src is an input image array and core is what kind of conversion you want what kind of color conversion you want for example in my case my image is img and the color code when I just want to provide is just provide cv2 dot and uh, use the capital letters color underscore and if you press the keyboard shortcut tab it will display all the color code conversions so let me see this is my color is bgr the current color is bgr and you can see there are a lot of color codes are there which we can able to convert what are the color you want you can convert that in my case I just want to convert the color into BGR to RGB so what I can do is that I can simply select that so BGR 2 and as you can see RGB is there this is BGR to RGB select it so this is what my image underscore RG that's it what we can do here is that we can simply convert that image into RGB image this is really cool and even you can also convert that color into the grayscale and for that I can do give the variable gray equal to cv2 dot convert color and uh, what is the name of the image I want to convert is this and provide the color code it is color underscore BGR to there is a gray is there you can select the gray it's what it basically does is that like you know it will convert that BGR format to the gray scale image so let us display all the three images one is cv2 dot m show the first color is this is color BGR just remember like you know by default this will read an image in BGR format and also the display format of the open cv is bgr only so let me use this img this is the bgr and cv2.m show and color this is an rgb and that's i have that's img underscore rgb and similarly let me also show the grayscale color and let's put the weight key and destroy all windows 
let's execute it perfect so we have this is my bgr this is the perfect color and rgb is basically the inversion of this this is the invert color so basically it's trying to invert it because like you know blue is replaced by red and red is uh, replaced by blue you can see that blue is replaced by red and red is uh, replaced by blue and uh, white is white and green is uh, obviously the green color so that's why you have like you know some different combination of color is something like this is because like you know this we just change the color here and similarly the grayscale image this is my grayscale image perfect right this is a uh, this is how we can convert the colors from BGR to RGB, BGR to gray. Like this, you can convert uh, what are the color code you really want. You can also really convert that. So let me save that. Finally, we are ready with that. So let me save my grayscale image. I can do that. CV2 dot M right. And uh, we can save that. Let's say this is what my gray dot png, and uh, the name of the image is gray. Let me execute this. Done. Now we can see here we have our gray scale image is there. This is what this is what I just converted the gray scale image. Perfect, right? Excellent. This is how like you know we can do the color code conversions in OpenCV. I will see you in the next lecture on accessing and image manipulations in OpenCV. Until then, happy learning. Hey guys, welcome back. I know the previous lectures are not super exciting. What we did is just simply load an image, display the image and save it in some different file format. Now what we will do, we will do some exciting stuff in this lecture that is accessing and manipulating the pixels so first what we need to do is that we need to do uh, import necessary libraries like cv2 and numerical python once we did then we load the image this time we load different image so we can load an image pv 2 read, and i just want to load an image from the images folder and this time we'll go for bird.jpg image let's execute this now let's look into the image by using some function m show and wait key and destroy all windows every time writing the all the commands is not recommendable instead what we will do we will create some simple function and we will call that function now let's define a function def display and the function that I'm going to display and the two arguments I'm going to provide here one is win name and the second one is image now so let's uh, display it by cv2 dot m show and the first one to provide is win name and second one is image array then we'll do the wait key I will provide the zero and after that destroy all windows okay execute it now let us use this function and display the image what we have read so display and what you need to provide is the window name is win name and I'll just queue this is my image perfect so this is what the image that I'm going to be work on now excellent right now what I'm going to do in this example is just trying to accessing some pixels so let's look into the shape of an image first my image shape is you can find out by img dot shape and by executing this command we can get like you know what is the shape of an image and the shape of an image is 681 rows and uh, 640 columns that means the row we have 681 rows and 40 columns are there in this image so what we'll do is that let's try to access first 100 rows and first 100 columns we know that image is simple numerical python array 
just like the numerical python we can also access the arrays or we can also slice the array using some slicing method in numerical python so what we will do we will do exactly the same thing like slicing method so let's use a slicing because it's a numerical python you can look in the data type of this is img it is a numerical python basically it is a numpy array so now what we will do let us try to access first 100 rows and 100 columns just like the numerical python you can do that let's say I'll name it as corners and that's going to be equal to img and just use the indexing what we need to do is that like you know first need to provide the index rows so 0 to 100 and also I'll just provide the columns I want from 0 to 100 execute it so that's it so now what we got is that like you know we got the corners where we accessed first 100 rows and first 100 columns from the image let us display it so using display function of corners we can get that oh when you just need to provide the window name here so let me provide the name corner exactly so this is what the corner you can see i'm accessing the first 100 rows and first 100 columns so what i'll do here is that let me also uh, display my corner as also i will display my image so for that i'm show this is what my original image original and uh, this is what my img and similarly pcb2.m show let me also show my corner and that's my corners and let me use a weight key of zero cv2 dot destroy all windows execute it and as you can see this is what my original image and i can able to access the first hundred rows and first hundred columns just like very simple it's a, almost similar to your numpy indexing concept cool right so now what we will do we understand like you know how to access the uh, pixels of an image and we can also do the manipulate those pixels what are the pixels you have considered we can also manipulate those pixels so what I'll do in my case is that like you know since I access the first hundred rows and first hundred columns of from the image and I just want to change that into some green color let's see that how to do that so changing color changing first hundred rows and 100 columns to green color let's see that so it's very simple the first what we will do is that let's define the green color with uh, variable green and uh, just define the green pixel the green pixel is 0 comma 255 comma 0 for 8 bit array it is 0 comma 255 comma 0 that's it is very simple that's my green color now what i can do here is that let me change the color and we can simply change the color using uh, access first we'll access it so 0 to 100 and 0 to 100 and assign uh, for this assign green that's it so this is how we can manipulate the pixels means you can change the pixels let us display my image now display img so first one is this is my manipulate manipulate that's my img let's execute this perfect now we can see that so we have this is the green color this is my uh, first hundred rows and first hundred column accessed it and i changed that into the green color perfect right this is how we can do and we can access and we can manipulate the pixels using open cv you can now play with this by applying to the different images with the different colors and different positions i will see you in the next lecture how to draw the drawings using open cv until then happy learning
Drawing a line is very simple enough, right? Now we can move on to the drawing the rectangles. Now let us define the rectangle. We have a module called rectangle. So what I'll try to draw here is that I just want to draw a rectangle between the two points. And here even in the rectangle, I just want to define the two points. Let's say, assume that I just want to draw a rectangle from here to here. And this time I'll use the same green color here. Let's see now how to draw a rectangle. So this is uh, drawing rectangle. All right. Now, so let us uh, use a module. Let us use the method in CV2, which is CV2 dot rectangle. And uh, let's see this. We can see the same arguments that was there in the line also. Here you can see the image. And we have the point one and point two, which basically represents the diagonal points between the rectangle. So we need to provide the diagonal points. And after that, this is the color. What is the color you want? So at the, at the moment, well, let me take this image is my canvas. And uh, the point one, let me define the point is 10 comma 10. And the point two, let me define this time is 60 comma 60. So between uh, 10 by 10 and the 60 by 60 I just want to draw a rectangle here where 10 by 10 and 60 by 60 are the diagonal points and let us define the color is green all right so let us display it so display canvas with the name canvas execute it here we go we can see that this is my 10 by 10 point and 60 by 60 point I can able to draw one nice rectangle this is how like you know we can draw a nice rectangle with the uh, cv2 cv2 module with the module rectangle and open cv similar to the red line we have like you know the thickness and just like that what we will do is that let us draw some red rectangle box and with the thickness is equal to phi let's see that so cv2 dot rectangle let's define my canvas and here what we can see is that we have the point one and point two let me define my point one is uh, 50 comma 200 and my point two is some random point 200 comma 225 let us define my color is red and this time I just want to define my thickness is five pixels now let us display it display canvas now my image is canvas execute it here you go we have the five pixels rectangle box is appeared here it's really excellent right let us also see one more way of defining the rectangle that is filled one let's see now how to uh, fill with the entire color this time what we will do is that i will use the blue color and i'll fill all this blue color here let's use that now define the blue color blue color is 255 comma 0 comma 0 now let's draw one rectangle to it cv2 dot rectangle and uh, the image is again the canvas now this time the point i'm interested here is 200 comma 50 some random points and um, 225 comma 200 so I'm use these points and the color I just want to provide here is uh, blue in order to fill it in order to fill that what we need to do is that like you know we need to provide the thickness here in thickness I will mention minus one if I put minus one open CV understands that I just want to fill all the gap here so let me execute this by displaying my image display canvas and provide canvas execute it here you go we can see like you know nice blue line you can see the filled blue line is what you can see here congratulations you now had a solid grasp on drawing rectangles in the next lesson we will move on to the drawing circles until then happy learning using numpy array slicers in the previous lesson we were able to draw a green square on our image but what if if we want to draw a circle 
or a single line. NumPy does not provide that kind of functionality. It's only numerical processing library after all. Luckily, OpenCV provides a convenient, easy to use methods to draw the shapes on our image. In this chapter, we will review the most three basic methods to draw the shapes. CV2.line, CV2.rectangle, and CV2.circle. Before we start exploring the drawing capabilities of OpenCV, let's first define our canvas in which we want to draw our masterpiece. Up until this point, we have only loaded images of disk. However, we can also define our images manually using NumPy array. Given that OpenCV interprets an image as a NumPy array, there is no reason why we can't manually define the image ourselves. In order to initialize our image, let's write the code. The first, we need to import all the necessary libraries like NumPy and also import CV2. Now let us define the canvas here. Canvas equal to NP.0 and let's define my canvas with an array of 300 by 300 shape. Rows is 300, columns is 300 and chan number of channels equal to 3. And it is very important to note that the data type of this. Any image should be an unsigned 8-bit image. So let's define the data type to 8-bit. That's unsigned 8-bit integer. So which is unit 8. Now we have initialized our canvas. Let's look into our canvas now. So we can look into a canvas by using the cv2.mshow command. Let's define that in a function called display. Just like in the previous example, it's a win name and img image. These are the two inputs. And what I want to do is that I just want to show my win name and image. And let's put some weight key and assign zero. Also, cv2 dot destroy all windows. Execute it. Now let's display my canvas using the function display of canvas. Oh, we need to provide the window name here. This is my canvas. All right, now we got my canvas. As you can see, this is a black because I'm initialize all the values with zero. So that's why I'm getting a black color, the uh, height of 300 and width of 300. The height is basically defined the number of rows and width will basically defined by number of columns. So now what I want to draw here is that I just want to draw some line here. So from this point to from this point, I just want to draw a line. So let us draw a line using OpenCV. The first thing we do is define a tuple used to represent our green color. So let me define the green in a tuple and let's define a tuple. This is a zero comma 255 comma zero. This basically represents the green color. Now let us draw a straight line. We now in CV2 we have a module line CV2 dot line and here if we look into the arguments we have img point 0.1 point 0.2 color thickness line type and shift i am basically interested in img point 0.1 and point 0.2 point 0.1 and the point 0.2 these are the two points we need to provide from which it will try to draw a line between the two points here and we need to specify the color that which we want to draw so let's define the image it is a canvas and uh, the point one I just want to provide is zero comma zero, and the point two is three hundred comma three hundred. All right, and the color I just want to define here is green. That's the color I just want to define now. Now let us display my image using function display. Display canvas comma canvas. Execute it. Here you go, we can see that I can able to display a line, some nice green line between the two points from this point to this point. It's really cool, right? Shall we also draw one more line with one more diagonal point from this point to this point? Yes, we can do that. Let's do it now. So 
so this time what i will do i will define the line width and also let's see with a different color let me define the red color now red equal to the sensor is a bgr blue is zero green is zero and i just want regret now let me draw a line and now the canvas now just define the point one the point one what i want here is 300 comma zero and the point two is zero comma 300 and the color is red color and here let's let us understand this thickness thickness for time being let me put three this three indicates it will draw a it will draw a line with the width of three pixels let's display it using the function display display canvas and canvas execute it perfect right this is this time we got some green line is already there and on top of this what we did is that we drawn some red line with three pixel thickness this is how we can draw a line let's do some abstract drawing this time i'll use a random radius and the random center of circle and let's see we will draw some circle what we will get let's look into that let's see some abstract drawing so let's define a loop for i in range of 0 to 25 what i'm trying to do here is that i'm trying to generate 25 circles here and with the radius which are my random numbers equal to np dot random dot random dot rand end and let me define my radius the lower size is 5 and high is 200 and color also I'll give the random colors this time np dot random dot rand end now the lowest value is 0 and the high value is 256 and the size I want the tuples here right so that's the reason provide 3 comma and convert that into a list now let us create a center of the circle which is my point pt which is equal to np dot random dot rand end now let us define it the lowest value is 0 and the highest value is uh, 300 since my the size of the image is 300 comma 300 so that's why i'll go for as high as 300 and now the size is basically i just want the two values which is my x and y so that's why it lets me provide something like this now let us define my circle so cv2 dot circle and let me call the canvas comma let's create a tuple what do we do here we just want to provide the tuple of centers my center of the image is my pt that's my pt and the radius i'm randomly generating the radius d i u s radius and this time what i want to do here is that i just want to provide the color randomly which is my color and the thickness i just want to fill my circles minus one that's it so now let us display the image for that i'll use the function c display and call it display and this is my canvas now canvas execute it perfect right so this is how we can get some beautiful abstract image so every time you execute that you'll get some different colors let's see let me execute once more let me execute once again we're getting different colors it's good right it's really really awesome right i think this looks uh, really good so what i'll do i'll save this image we can also save that image using uh, cv2.mwrite let me define the name of the image is canvas.png now the image is canvas execute it so that's it this is how we can able to uh, generate some abstract drawing with opencv let us let us open that image and see all right now you can see that this is what my image and this is what we have generated 
it's beautiful right some kind of abstract drawing which we did with the open cv it's really really nice i'll see you in the next lecture more on image processing until then happy learning drawing circles is just as simple as drawing rectangles but the function arguments are little different let us go ahead and get started we need fresh canvas to draw the circles so what we will do we will reinitialize the canvas again so for that what we can do is that let me create a canvas again canvas canvas equal to np dot zeros and the shape of that is 300 comma 300 comma 3 and this is very important data type is unsigned integer 8 executed so now we what we got is that we got a fresh blank canvas in order to draw the circles we require the two variables which is center x and center y these two variable represents the x y coordinates of the center of the image We'll calculate the center by examining the shape of our numpy array then dividing by 2 the height of the image can be found by canvas dot shape 0 and the width can be founded by canvas dot shape 1 so let's write the code here center x comma center y and that's going to be equal to i'll just calculate the shape for center x which is my one and just divide by 2 what I'm doing here is that I'm going using the two forward slash which will return you the integer value. So let me also define the canvas with the shape one, 0 and uh, divided by 2 will get the integer value. So let me put this in tuple so that it will arrange accordingly. And uh, what I want to draw here is that like you know I just want to draw one uh, white circle. So for that, let me define a white color equal to just fill all the values 255 comma 255 comma 255. So what I'll do now, let me draw the concentric circles where it is sharing the same center of the circle. And I'll just incrementally changes the radius of the circle. So let's do it in a for loop now. So for R, which is my radius in the range let me define from 0 to 175 and with incremental step of 25 now let's define my circle cv2 dot circle and the module inside the module what it is actually looking for that is image center basically what is a center we are looking for that and we already calculated the center here which is my center x and center y that should be in my tuple and the radius I will dynamically change the radius in the for loop and the color what I want to do here is that for the time being let me give the white color so let me assign the variable canvas to this argument image and uh, for center let me provide in a tuple it is my center x comma center y next is radius is r and uh, the color is white that's it so this is how we can create the concentric circles so let us display the image here so we can display the image using the function display which we defined in the previous lecture let's use this display and uh, this is what my circles and define my canvas is this execute it perfect right so this is how i can create the simple circles or uh, concentric circles how it looks like it looks like the bullseye right this is how we can do some beautiful circles with open cv let's do the phase detection project using open cv python since we understand the hair casker classifier is nothing but the wilo jones algorithm now let us download the wilo jones algorithm that is hair casket classifier for phase detection what you need to do is that go to google and type Hair Cascade Classifier, OpenCV, and GitHub. And you can able to find the first link here, like you know, Hair Cascade Classifier. 
and make sure you get this uh, URL that is github slash opencv slash opencv tree master data and the Harkascred classifier. So here you can see like you know the bunch of Classcare classifiers are available which will actually do the specific task. For example, this Classcare classifier will do the eye detection and this will do the eye tree eye glass detection and frontal cat face and so on. There are many predefined Classcare classifiers are readily available. What you need to do is that just download it and write some code doing the object detection. Since our project is on the face detection, so what we're going to do is that we are going to take this Cascade classifier like frontal face default and we'll download that. And using that, we will do the face detection. If you understand the code of frontal face, then you can apply the same code to rest of the Cascade classifier. Now let's don't waste your time and click on this frontal face default. And uh, now click on this raw. That's it. Now you are in the your particular URL. So what you can do is that just right click and click on save as and put that in your particular rest folder, whichever you're working on. For example, I'm working on this particular folder. So let me save that XML file in this particular folder where exactly I'm working on. And uh, what I want to do is that let me create one folder name model in that model. I just want to save it since I already saved that and let me save it again with the particular name hair cascade frontal face default. You can also download this frontal face default XML file even in the resources. Go to your Jupyter notebook and make sure that you have the cascade classifier in the models folder that is hair cascade frontal face default now what i want to do is that first i will apply the cascade classifier to this image which is faces.jpg there you can see we have the three faces and let's apply the cascade classifier to these three faces and we will detect the face using that then we will use the real-time face detection apply that to videos Cool, let's open the new Jupyter Notebook and name it as Project Phase Detection. Now let's start writing our code. The first step what we need to do is that obviously we need to import the two necessary libraries that is NumPy and CV2. Let's import that. Import NumPy as NP and also import CV2. And after that let me take some sample image IMG which I'll read that which is from the CV2 I'm read and the name of the image is faces.jpg okay let's display that cv2.m show and uh, the window name is face and the matrix is img and cv2.weight key of zero and cv2.destroy all windows execute it all right, so this is what the faces what we have with us. Now let's apply the Casker classifier and let's do the face detection for this. Now, in order to apply the Casker classifier, let's first load the XML file. And what I'll do, I will name it as face cascade equal to cv2 dot, and it is the cascade classifier. And what I need to do is that I just need to provide the path of the Casker classifier. Since I know my Casker classifier is there in my model folder and the name of the Casker classifier is hair cascade parental face default.xml. So that's what the Casker classifier I'm working on now. Execute it. Perfect. Now what I want to do is that let's apply this Casker classifier to our faces and let's see what you're going to get here. But remember, we can't directly apply the Casker classifier to our image directly. What you need to do is that we need to convert that image into grayscale and then we need to apply it to the Casker classifier to get the bounding boxes. So what we will do is step one in phase detection is convert image into grayscale. So gray equal to cv2 dot convert color now 
the source but nothing but the image is img and now what i want to do is that let me specify the color space cv2 underscore color underscore bgr to gray that's what i want to do here then the next step is apply this grayscale image to my face casket step two apply grayscale image to cascade classifier now face cascade dot and what i want to do here is that we have the three different options or they detect multi-scale detect multi-scale 2 and detect multi-scale 3 what i'm going to do in this case is that i'm going to select detect multi-scale 2 and detect multi-scale 2 basically will return you the two arguments one is object and second one is number of detections before that understanding the object and number of detection let's see the input for the detect multi-scale 2 here what we need to do is that we need to provide the image to which image i want to extract the face and the scale factor minimum neighbors flags min size and max size number of detections basically refer to the minimum number of neighbors means number of neighbors that was detected that was referred to the min neighbors at the moment let me take it as a default now what i'm going to do is that let me take only the image which is my grayscale and uh, here the input for this is my boxes which actually the object what you're going to get here is the boxes and next is detections let's execute it perfect now let me print box and what you can see here is that we have the four rows this four rows actually indicates that we have the four faces and let me also look into the detections here if you look into the detections what this says is that this image has 35 neighbors has been detected and this box of portion has only four neighbors are detected and this box of portion has detected 37 whereas this box is detected 10 so what i want to do here is that actually we need to set some threshold while doing this process that is minimum number of neighbors generally the minimum number of neighbors people will usually select is any number greater than six so what i'm going to do is that let me select some minimum neighbors that's going to be equal to some number let me take eight here now let's execute that and here you go we can see only the three boxes are being detected and the number of detections what we have is 35 37 and 10 so this is really cool now right okay now let's try to understand what is actually this box is giving you here the meaning of these boxes is 321 and 84 these two values represent the x y position and this represent width of the box and height of the box more precisely this is the width of the face and height of the face that's what we have here and similarly this represents like you know x y position width of the face and height of the face now we know like you know we have x position we have y position we have w and h and what we need to do is that we just need to simply draw the bounding box nothing but rectangle we know how to draw the rectangle right now what i will do is that let's write some code and do some rectangle here okay so i will write down here only like uh, this is my step number three is actually we are trying to do the rectangle box means uh, drawing bounding box that's what we are going to do here okay in order to draw the bounding box what we have to do is that we need to take the x y position and width and height here so for that what we'll do for x comma y comma w comma h in box so basically i'm doing in a loop now let me print my x y position of all these things x comma y comma w comma h 
here you go we have x y w and h now let me use a cv2 dot rectangle and draw the bounding box on top of the face cv2 dot rectangle and here i just need to provide the image name to which image i just want to draw the bounding box which is nothing but image generally it's a good idea to copy the image here so what i will do here is i will take one image saying like i am a g and that's going to equal to img dot copy it's a good idea to copy the image now let's take this image and pass it to it since i'm drawing something in the images i don't want to disturb my original image that's the reason i'm taking the duplicate image in the duplicate image i'm drawing it okay what is my point one and point two point one and point two is x comma y and the point two is x plus w comma y plus h these are the two diagonal points for a rectangle next the color i just want to do is let me take uh, green color 0 comma 255 comma 0 with that i can able to get the green color and then the thickness is going to be equal to 1 that's it so with that what i can do is that i can able to get the rectangle let me do one thing let me display this so with that cv2 dot weight key m show now this is my face detection and the image which contains the faces is image now let me provide the weight key set the value to zero and cv2 dot destroy all windows now execute it perfect you can see that we have detected the face and what we did what are the face we have detected we draw the bounding box on top of this awesome right this is how the face detection is going to work using viola jones algorithm popularly known as hair casket classifier okay let me close this by press any button escape now what i'm going to do here is that instead of writing something in this way let me write the function here so the meaning of that is def and uh, i just want to write the function name it as face detection so just taking the face detection and the input for that is i just want to give the image and then the output what i'm going to get from this is I am a G. That's what I'm going to get here. Return I am a G. So that's it. That's what we're going to get here. So let me delete this and execute it. Perfect. So let me delete all these things which is not required for me anymore. Now let's see, like, you know, what exactly we're going to get here. So this is what my I am a G detect equal to. Now let me test this with a phase detection and the input for that is I am a G now let me show that cv2 dot m show and this is what my face detect and the arrow is img dot detect now cv2 dot weight key of zero and cv2 dot destroy all windows now execute it here we go we got obviously we got the same thing but still what i can able to say is that this is the good way of writing like whenever we have the functions so this is usually apply to our images that will be really really helpful in the next lesson we will see one more project on applying the face detection to our videos until then happy learning hey everyone welcome back in this lesson we will see one more project that is real-time face detection what we're going to do is that what are the face detection we did in the previous lecture this is the face detection applied only to the static images now let's see how to apply these to our videos all right so here you can do whatever you want i'm going to do is that i'm going to access my webcam and uh, let's see my face detection here okay so in order to do that what we will do is that let's start writing the code cap equal to 
and uh, which is my cv2 dot video capture of zero just mentioning my index to zero since i already imported the necessary settings like cascade classifier what we will do it is always a good practice to import it again now so once we imported this cascade classifier and also make sure that you're running this face detection too once you all the codes are online then we start building our while loop and building our application so while true now here we know that we have the two arguments that is return and frame and which is actually equal to cap dot read and since i know like you know return is basically uh, either true or false means if the video capture is proper then we'll get true otherwise it is false so in that case what i will do is that if ret equal to equal to false if the ret is false then i just want to break the loop otherwise what we will do is that this time we are going to do the phase detection i just need to apply this function that is phase detection because in this function we have the grayscale and also we have the phase detection and everything is there so what i'm going to do here is that let me apply this function which is phase detection and uh, this is my image underscore detect equal to phase detection and the input for that is become my frame now the next step is going to be displaying the image so we know how to display that cv2 dot m show and this is my real time phase detection and what i'm going to do here is that and the image that is input for this is phase image detect now let me mention the weight key cv2 dot weight key and uh, set the delay to one and equal to equal to ORD you can provide whatever the input argument you want you can give that I I generally like a so that's why I'm giving a you if at all you want to give what other letter you want you can give that the meaning of a means if I press a then my window is going to be closed now if at all the user press a then I need to break the loop and finally cap dot release and cv2 dot destroy all windows all right now let's execute the code here we go this is me again and you can see that my program can able to detect my face and it is really good and accurate awesome right so this is how we can able to do the face detection project cool right i will see you in the next lecture more on this until then happy learning welcome back face detection using deep neural network is very accurate model particularly used in many real-time scenarios now let's see how to use deep learning based face detection using OpenCV OpenCV also supports the object detection models such as single shot multi-box detector like SSD algorithm which is particularly used in the ResNet 10 network and also OpenCV has a DNN module which supports the models from Cafe, TensorFlow, Torch and Darknet. There are two models which are popularly used in the phase detection models. One is phase detection FP16 and phase detector unsigned 8 bit integer. FP16 is also known as floating point 16 version of the original Cafe implementation which is actually the one of the most widely used implementations and this model is based upon the ssd framework you can download the pre-trained model from the link which is given below also you can work on phase detector unsigned 8-bit integer that is 8-bit quantized version using tensorflow and here is the link which is available and you can download it for free and what you're going to do in this project we are going to use the floating point 16 version by Cafe and build the phase detection models. Upcoming next, we will do the phase detection using Deep Neural Network module and OpenCV. I will see you in that. Hey everyone, welcome back. Now let's start doing the phase detection using Deep Neural Networks. Before starting this project, what you need to do is that we need to download the models like deployed prototypes and ResNet 10 model from the cafe. So these two are actually required for us. 
and we are going to use the same image that we used in the previous Viola Jones algorithm. Now let's see how this deep neural networks can able to detect the face. Let's go back and now let me create a new notebook from Python 3. And let's name it as face detection using DNN module. Alright, so let's start importing the necessary libraries that is NumPy and OpenCV. Import NumPy as NP. Also import CV2. Execute it. Let's start load our sample image that is img equal to cv2 dot mread and the image that I want to read here is face dot jpg. Let me display it cv2 dot m show and this is my face then it is img and cv2 dot weight key and provide the value to zero and cv2 dot destroy all windows. Execute it. And here you go what you can see is that like you know we have this image with us and let's apply our deep neural networks model to it and get the bounding box on top of the face. Let's do it. There are multiple steps that was involved while doing this process. It is not pretty straightforward just like your hair casker classifier which you did in the previous project. We have several steps are there so little bit careful while doing this process. The step one is that obviously we need to load our cafe model. Let me take it is a face detection model that's going to be equal to cv2 dot and this time I'm going to use a DNN module. It is a deep neural networks framework and depend upon your framework that you're using like cafe or tensorflow uh, you need to use that particular thing. Since I'm loading the model from the cafe, so let me use this readnet from cafe. And here I just need to provide the two arguments one is prototext and the cafe model. Let me provide the prototext that is there in my models folder dot models and it is deploy dot prototext dot txt. And the next one I need to provide is the cafe model. So that is there in dot models folder. And we have ResNet 10. Perfect. So these are the two models which I actually want to load. Let me execute it. Now we have successfully loaded our deep neural network model. Now the next step is going to be that we need to apply our deep neural network to this face detection model. Then we can able to get the bounding box. But there are certain processes been involved. The first step is that we need to extract the blob from image then we need to set the input. Okay so let me write down the step one in the phase detection with the deep neural networks is blob from image. Okay let me take this blob equal to cv2 dot dnn dot blob from image and what I need to do is that I just need to provide the image here. The image I just want to provide here is img and the scale factor is 1 and the size of the image I just want to convert is 300 by 300. The reason I just want to convert that to 300 by 300 because my cafe model is actually trained with the images of 300 by 300. That's the reason we have to resize that into 300 by 300. So that's my size and next is RGB mean values basically this are all the mean subtraction values and the values that are used in the mean subtraction values is 104, 177 and 123. Next is provide the swap RB is equal to true basically these values are running under the RGB values not BGR so since I read an image in the BGR so let me mention swap RB to true and uh, that's it. So this is what we need to do from the blob from image. Now the next step what we need to do is that we need to set blob as input to our phase detection model. So this is my phase detection model. Let me take the phase detection model now set input. The input I just want to set here is blob done. Now we are ready and run our phase detection model. 
so that is nothing but the step number three is get the output that is nothing but detections equal to phase detection model dot forward what exactly we're trying to do is that we are not changing any kinds of weight we're just passing to our model and get the outputs and with that we can able to get the detections now let me execute it now what i'm doing here is that let me print the detections here okay this is the long array let me look into the shape of this and what you can notice here is that we have the fourth dimension array that is 1 comma 1 200 comma 7 so let me look into this what exactly we have okay so i open up the ppt and let me explain from here so here are the two things you need to notice here one is 200 and second one is 7 the 200 the meaning of this is that we have detected the 200 faces don't worry about that there are no 200 faces out there by default the cafe model will detect the 200 faces and we have to decide like you know how many faces you want to take that we have to decide based upon this seven this has this seven has the information about this so what is this seven basically there are seven indexing out there zero index meaning it is an image number one index it means that it is zero or one zero indicates that it is a phase and one indicates that it is not a phase and that value is being calculated based upon the confidence score what confidence score is having like you know the value between zero to one binary value is basically suppose if the confidence score is less than 0 0.5 then we name it as zero otherwise we name it as one which indicates that we have the good confidence that particular region of interest is a face and index number three four five and six basically gives you the diagonal points of a rectangle start x and start y index and ny which are basically the diagonal points of the bounding box so with that what we can do is that we can able to draw our bounding box on top of our face but one thing we need to remember is that confidence score confidence score is the key to selecting the number of faces let's go back to our code and let's try to understand what is the confidence score which we got all right now we are in the jupyter notebook now let me do one thing let me take detections of 0 comma 0 comma let me display all the confidence score what we have and uh, what exactly that means it is the index number 2 let me print it so this and all the confidence score what we got and here you can see that we have the first three values are actually having the highest confidence score that is more than 50 percentage and the rest all the detections having the low confidence score like 11 percent 9 percent and so on generally it is a good practice to take the confidence score greater than 50 percent so let me take the confidence score greater than 50 percent now for that what i'm going to do is that i'm just going to take a loop and in that loop i will manually take each and every confidence score and the bounding box since my idea is to detect the phase we understand what we got now let me delete all these things now i'll write down here is step number four is actually the very big step is uh, drawing bounding box on top of phase detected okay so that's what we have to do now in order to draw the bounding box what we will do is that first let me copy the image i am a g is equal to image dot copy and now let me take the height and width from this image which is actually equal to image dot shape and uh, i just want to just select only the first two values that's it now the next step is that let me print all the confidence codes so in order to print all the confidence score let me write a loop for i in range of it is 0 to basically we need to take this 200 in order to dynamically take this 200 what i will do is that let me take the detections and uh, in the detections i need to take this in order to take this 
I just want to take the shape of that and in the shape of that I need to do the indexing 0 1 and 2 with that I can able to get the 200 now let me print I so basically I'm printing the value I from 0 to 200 now in order to print the confidence score let me take the confidence equal to detections in detections I just want to print the confidence we know how to do that that is nothing but 0 comma 0 comma and this is my ith confidence comma index number 2 which I can able to get the confidence let me print the confidence now execute it here you go what you can see is that like you know we got the confidence score for all the detections but I just want to display only the confidence whose value is greater than 0 0.5 in that case let me do one more thing like if confidence is greater than 0 0.5 then only I just want to print confidence now execute it here you go what you can see is that we have only the three phases obviously I know that in this phase there are three phases are there and even the deep neural networks can able to detect the three phases this is the key thing that what I'm trying to say is that generally the confidence score should be greater than 0 0.5 so once I define the confidence and I can able to get all the values now the next step here is that I just want to take the bounding box points means diagonal points I just want to extract it so those diagonal points are there from the index 3 to 7 so that is actually available in the detections so let me take this and now let me take the box and what I will do is that detections and uh, this should be colon 0 comma 0 comma i because at ith confidence i need to take the index positions from 3 to 7 with that i can able to get the box let me print the box here here you go what you can see is that we got the boxes but remember these boxes are normalized to width and height of the image means this is normalized to width and this is normalized to height and this is to width and this is to height in order to denormalize that I just need to multiply this with my width and height let me do that so let me multiply with np dot array and since I just want to multiply this with width let me take the width which I already calculated nothing but w comma h and w comma h now execute that and here you go what you can see is that we can able to get the denormalized values again we have a problem that OpenCV will always support the NTZ values now what I want to do is that I just want to change the data type here now box equal to box dot as type and this is my NTZ now let me execute that here you go what you can see is that all the NTZ values are there and remember this is my start x and start y and this is my end x and end y basically this is my point 1 and this is my point 2 okay so let me take point 1 is actually equal to it's a tuple of box of 0 and this is my box of 1 and similarly my point 2 is equal to tuple of box of 2 and box of 3 so that's it so with that we can able to get the point 1 and point 2 now we are ready now what we can do is that let me draw the rectangle on top of the face that was detected in order to do that let me take the rectangle okay let me do one thing draw rectangle for that let me take the cv to dot rectangle and uh, here I just want to provide the image is image and the point 1 is pt1 and point 2 is pt2 and the color I just want to take is the green color it is 0 comma 255 comma 0 now the thickness is let me take one pixel thickness is one pixel that's it with that what we can do is that we can able to draw the bounding box on top of our face detected let me 
display all the values what we got which is cv2 dot m show and this time i'm going to show my face detection this is nothing but with the dnn module and uh, which is nothing but my image now cv2 dot wait key provide the value zero and cv2 dot destroy all windows perfect now let's execute it here you go what you can see is that we have the faces that is been detected this is really cool right it is actually even better than your viola jones algorithm now let me do one thing let me put some text like what is the confidence score which they got in order to do that i am going to use the put text put text and the value that i want to put text is the confidence score okay so the text is going to be equal to let me generate the text and here it is a score and the score this should be value is being displayed in the percentile so since i just want to insert the value in the format let me insert all the values and just want to take the integer value out of this since the value we are getting in the 0 to 1 range I need to multiply that value outside with 100 anyway assume that we got some value in the 100 now let me take the integer values by using this now let me insert the value which is using the format and the value I'm getting here is the confidence into 100 let me print this print of text let me comment this okay we got 193 and 66 that is perfect now let me put percentile and this is also cool now our text is ready now next step is we need to use the cv2 dot put text and here let me pass the image is image and the text is text origin nothing but the position let me give the point one and the and the font face is cv2 dot font let me use simplex next is the font scale is one and the color let me give the white color 255 comma 255 comma 255 and one more thing is thickness is equal to let me give two pixels so that's it so with that i can able to do all such kind of things now let me uncomment all these things now execute it and here you go what you can see is that we got the score and which is 100% score that is the detection score is 100% and this detection score is 93% and this detection score is 66% awesome right let me close it what I'll do let me make it the function out of this and since my input for this is my image let me select all and press tab so that we can maintain the indentation and let me create the function name it as face detection underscore dnn and the input for this is image that's it and once you pass this image and what you're going to get here is the return which is nothing but image so that's it so with that we can able to get the face detection let me test this and this is my image underscore detect equal to face detection dnn and input for that is img and input for that is img now let me execute this perfect now let me do one thing let display it which is cvt dot m show and this is my face detection and this is my image detect now cv2 dot wait key of zero and cv2 dot destroy all windows now execute it here you go what you can see is that we got the face detection and we can able to define the confidence score on top of this this is awesome right so this is how we can able to do the face detection using deep neural network module in OpenCV. i hope you really enjoy this project in the next project, we will do the real-time phase detection using deep neural networks. I will see you on that. Until then, happy learning.
Welcome back. Now we are in the one more project that is real time phase detection using deep neural networks. In this lecture, what we're going to do is that we are going to do the phase detection for videos. Let's do that. In the previous project, what we did, we created one function that is phase detection underscore deep neural network, where we did all the functionalities that was required for doing the phase detection. Now, what we're going to do is that using that, let's apply to our video. And here I'm going to access my web camera and detecting my face. Are you guys ready now? Let's kill it. The first thing is cap equal to cvt dot video capture and provide the default index as zero. Let me read the model that is a phase detection. And immediately after that, let's start writing the while loop and read the frames from cap. All right, so while true, now inside that, what I'm going to do is that let me take the return comma frame and which I'm getting from the cap dot read. And since we already know that return contains whether true or false, and if false, I want to break it. So if ret equal to equal to false, I just need to break the loop, else I want to do the phase detection. We know how to do the phase detection because we already written the function that is phase detection underscore dnn. Let me use this and image underscore detection that's going to be equal to phase detection and let me provide the frame to it with that i can able to get the phase detection if the face is there we'll get the box otherwise we will not get the box here okay so we guys are ready now now the next step is that let me display it using cvt dot m show and here this is my real time phase detection with deep neural networks and uh, my array is image underscore detection perfect now the next step is provide the weight key cvt dot weight key let me set the value to one and uh, equal to equal to or of let me use the letter a means if i press the keyboard button a i'm going to close the window if I close the window, then I need to break the loop. Then finally cap dot release and cv2 dot destroy all windows. That's it. Now let me execute it. Hey everyone, again welcome back. You can see that this is my detection score of my face, and uh, I'm moving backward, forward, and all the directions. You can see. This deep learning model is very perfect and able to detect my face very accurately. Awesome, right? So this is what the real-time face detection with deep neural networks. I will see you in the next lecture more on OpenCV stuff. Until then, happy learning.